Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my design patterns video tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the facade design pattern. And chances are you have used the facade design pattern and don't even realize it. It is an extremely simple pattern, and it's pretty much common sense that we would use it as much as possible. And the reason why, use the facade design pattern whenever you want to create a simplified interface that performs many other actions behind the scenes. And here is a perfect example and the example I will show you in code that will follow. Let's say you want want to just simply be able to say, can I withdraw $50 from the bank? You would then expect the person that you would pose this question to, to check if your checking account number is correct, check if your security code is correct, check if those funds are available, and then make changes accordingly. Mean, give you the $50 that you asked for, and then subtract $50 from your current account. All of that stuff you would expect to happen quite seamlessly, and that is how you would implement that using the facade design pattern. So let's stop messing around and get right into the code. All right, we're going to just go right into test bank account right here, and I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to aim to do. What we're basically going to do is implement the facade, and I'm just going to call it bank facade accessing bank is equal to new bank account facade, and then let's say you pass it a security code or your checking account number followed by your security key, and there you go. So you've created that guy, and then we want to simply be able to ask it questions and then just have it do everything right on its own. So withdraw cash $50 and then we expect it to just do that. And then we could also come in here and withdraw cash of say $900 and since we only have a thousand dollars in the bank as you're going to see here in a second we're going to handle that. And then also we want to give it the option to deposit cash of say $200. Okay, so those are all the things that we want to implement here. And you can see that all these things are going to be handled in the background, just as I talked about in the previous part of the presentation. So now let's go in here and start implementing all the different classes that are going to handle all these things behind the scenes. Well, next thing we're going to do is go into welcome to bank.java. And it's just going to give you a simple welcome message. So system out, print line, and say something like welcome to ABC Bank. And then it could say something like, we are happy to give you your money if we can find it. And there you are. And there is this class, and all it's going to do is pop up this little message on the screen. So next thing we need to do is check to make sure that the banking or checking account number that they provide is correct. And we're going to do that in account number check.java. So let's just bounce inside of here. And let's say to keep everything in order, let's just put an account number in here. Of course, it would be much more complicated than this. And there's an account number that's saved in a private integer. And then we'll say something like public int get account number. And this is going to just simply return the account number that is going to be considered valid above. Closing curly braces. And then we could do something like a Boolean check or something. Of course, this has nothing to do with the facade pattern. This is just one of the tasks that I want performed behind the scenes. I could say something like get account number to check and then say if account num to check is equal to get account number and then we could return true. Like I said before, the facade has absolutely nothing to do with performing a bunch of if then else checks. It's just this is what I'm doing with this just to demonstrate it. Else and we'll say something like return false just to keep this all really simple. So all this guy's doing is checking to see if the account number you provided is valid. That's it. So we're just taking some of the code and sending it into the background and allowing it to handle that. So though the next thing we need to do here is check if the security code they provide is correct. So we'll just pretty much do the same thing. Int security code and let's say one of the valid security codes one two three four and then let's just bounce over to account check here and just steal this whole thing because we're pretty much going to do the same exact thing here paste that in there and then here we're just going to say get security code return security code and then we're going to have to add a couple different things inside of here and then in the boolean check we're just going to come in here and say is code correct and then security code to check. Here we're going to change this to security code. Here we're going to change this to SEC code to check. 
and then it's going to perform exactly the same action. So that's going to check if the security code is correct. And then we can check to see if they have enough funds in their account. And we're going to do that in funds check.java. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated because it's going to do a couple other things here. So we're going to say cash in account. And let's just say you start off with $1,000 just to keep it simple again. And then public double get cash in account. And it'll just return cash in account. And then let's say we want to handle decreasing cash in account. And that'll be a double. Just say cash withdrawn. And then we just say cash in account. And then we'll just put a negative sign like that. Cash with drawn and then just correct that and there we are now we're pretty much going to do exactly the same thing for increasing the cash in the account just change this to deposited and then here we're just going to change this to a plus sign and there we are so now let's get into all the other things we're going to need to do here and this is again the fund checker to make sure that when they say if they want certain money that we tell them that it's available or it's not and we're just going to throw another boolean in here have enough and all the code is available in a link underneath the video if you want to check it out and play around with this stuff so that it's easier to learn. Cash withdraw. And then we're just going to say cash to withdraw greater than get cash in account. Throw that right there. And if the cash to withdraw is greater than the cash in the account, we're going to do something like give them a warning. You don't have enough money. Not something somebody wants to hear. And then we could go current balance and then shoot the current balance out on the screen if we wanted to do that. And then on top of that, we're going to return false because that's going to say that, hey, yeah, well, you can't get a hold of the money that you thought you could get a hold of. And then we're going to throw another else statement inside of here. And we're going to say decrease cash in count cash to withdraw, which is going to decrease the total cash amount. And then give them a little message that says withdraw complete and then give them some current balance information, get cash and account, and there you go. And then also return true. And then outside of the Boolean have enough money, we're also gonna provide them with the option to make a deposit. So public void make deposit, it's gonna be a double cash to deposit, increase cash in account, cash to deposit, and then give them a little message, deposit complete, current balance is, get cash in account. There you are. So that's all we're going to have to do. And that guy's going to handle both handling withdraws as well as deposits to the account. No real reason to go and separate that out. So the next thing to do is to implement the facade. And we're going to call that bank account facade.java. So just go inside of here and let's start simplifying these interfaces so that the user's not going to have to worry about anything that's underneath the hood. So let's just go private int account number for their checking account int security code and then we have to make reference to all of the different objects or classes that are going to be handling all this information for us so i'm going to call that account checker security check code actually it makes more sense if i call that security code check and then call this code checker funds check is going to handle checking if there's enough funds and then don't want to forget welcome to bank and we're just going to call that bank welcome and that was the little message that pops up whenever the user opens up that and then we just have to create the constructor for this bank account facade and it's going to receive a new account number and new security code to be able to access that and then we're just going to assign the account number and the security code like that and then we're going to also initialize all of our objects account checker initialize that as well and the code checker security code check and then the fund checker is equal to new funds check. There you go. Those are all the objects that are going to handle all the complicated things in the background and just throw a T inside of there. So now we want to provide them with a way to be able to get access to the account numbers and security codes and all that. So just create public int get account number return account number. Simple stuff. Public int get security code return security code and then implement the option to withdraw cash withdraw cash and it's going to be it a double pass to it cash to get and then we're going to throw a whole bunch of if then else statements again doesn't really have anything to do with the facade pattern it's just what i'm doing here count active 
get count number go and grab that then we're going to say and code checker and call is code correct and then get our security code just go like that and then i'm also going to say and fun checker have enough money just double click on that and this is going to be cash to get so double click on that and if all those come true we're going to go system out transaction complete throw a new line inside of there just to clean that up a little bit and else if there was an error, meaning security codes or something else happened, didn't have enough money in the bank or what have you, we're going to go print line, transaction failed. And then as we did previously, the errors and all that other stuff is going to be handled elsewhere. And then if we want to deposit public void deposit cash, again, it's going to be a double to deposit. Then we're going to do our if then else statements again. And I'm just going to copy this. So I'll just copy that whole thing right there, place that right there, place that there. And then if the account number and the security code are fine, we don't need to check the balance because they're putting their money in. They're not trying to take money out. So we're just going to go make deposit, cash to deposit, and send that over. And then print out a message, transaction complete. Actually, let's just copy this. Copy that, paste that inside of there, file save it, and everything should work. So let's go back into testbankaccount.java and see if I did it right. Execute. And you can see right there. Welcome to ABC Bank. We're happy to give you your money if we can find it. And there you are. We put through a $50 withdrawal of cash. We had $1,000. Current balance is $950. Transaction complete. Current balance is $50 because we took out $900. And then we made a deposit of $200, which left us with a total deposit of $250 in our bank account. So there is the facade pattern. Pretty, pretty simple. I'm Like I said before, you've probably used it before, just didn't know it was called the facade pattern. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.